Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you guys are doing good today. And of course, I have to share our favorite meme with you guys. And as you guys know, when you guys see that meme, what that means is that we are going to be talking about R. Kelly, the Pissy Pied Piper, okay? So once again, R. Kelly is trending. You know, this R. Kelly situation is literally a Dragon Ball T episode, okay? So now what's going on with R. Kelly is that two women came out a few days ago, both stating that R. Kelly has sex with them um, back in like the 90s when they were only 17 years old and the legal age of consent for one of the women in Florida was 18. The legal age of consent for the other woman was 17. So it wasn't against the law, but the man was 28 years old at the time. So the first lady, her name is Lizette Martinez, and she did an interview with BuzzFeed Magazine, basically telling her story about, you know, the time she was with R. Kelly and how she thought it was just, you know, her and him. And she was 17 at the time. And he took her to Outback Steakhouse. And then within a month, he slept with her. The other woman, her name is Michelle, but she wants to stay private because she wants to protect her children and she still lives in the Chicago area but she says that R. Kelly slept with her when she was 17 years old as well okay so if you guys have not seen those articles I'll post a link down below in the comment section you guys can go and read them so now what's even more strange about this R. Kelly case is that Wendy Williams broke down crying yesterday on her show and basically she was crying because I feel like she knows a lot of deep dark secrets about R. Kelly but she's afraid to expose them and so then she went on to this whole little tirade about how R. Kelly can't read, he can't write, he can't count money. And I hadn't heard this rumor before, but she said the rumor's been put out there. Other people were confirming that Ricky Smiley said the same thing a few years ago. So R. Kelly is literally illiterate. And for him to have all these people around him, you know, the whole situation is sad. You know, this is a man that didn't have a formal education. He can't read, he can't write. So it's almost like people were allowing him to take advantage of younger people because possibly they themselves are taking advantage of R. Kelly. So this whole situation is just nuts. Go ahead and watch this clip of Wendy Williams crying and breaking down over R. Kelly. Check this out. I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. And, up, and also, you know, Robert, and it's long been said, but he actually did admit, admit this to me, which I was shocked that he was actually admitting this because, you know, he, did, he can't read, he can't write, and he can't add. You've never heard this before? No. Yeah, but it's been out here. Where, where have you all been? <laughs> anyway, and and he admitted this to me, and I won't tell you what he said about how he gets maneuvers, you know, through the world and, and things like that, but the idea that people are surrounding you and still wouldn't put you in school and, and get you as smart as your music is smart, I, like, I can't understand it. I can't understand not knowing how to read, write, or add, and I don't understand parents who unleash their kids. Oh. That's it. All righty then. I mean, I'm glad that she also called out the parents and said, you know, that the parents need to be there with their daughters and not, you know, give their daughters to these celebrities. But I'm still trying to figure out what kind of deep, dark secrets you got on R. Kelly, uh, Wendy. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and spill that damn tea. So anyhow, now, if this is not crazy enough, this morning, Megyn Kelly did an interview with Jocelyn Savage's parents. As we remember, the Savages were one of the first ones to come out a year ago, and they are saying that their daughter was part of R. Kelly's haram and that she was being brainwashed. And then we all saw that creepy interview that she did with TMZ where somebody was literally telling her what to say. And I spotted that shadow on her shirt when somebody was telling her to stop talking. So I was one of the first ones to point that shit out. So I don't know what's going on with Joyce Lynn, but she's still not home and her parents are really worried. So they met with Megyn Kelly. They talked about it. Well, now that same other chick, the DJ from Dallas, Kitty Jones, the one that was also in that documentary. Well, she did an interview with Megyn Kelly along with the new accuser. Her name is Asante McGee and they're both sharing their stories now Asante McGee you know I listened to her story and you know it's sad what she went through with R. Kelly now Kitty Jones I'm not feeling this woman at all I don't know what it is about her but something about her is just very disingenuous okay 
First of all, she went with R. Kelly literally two years ago. So she knew this man already had a fucked up background and that he was doing all types of ratchet stuff to children and people underage. But she felt that there was something so special about her that R. Kelly would basically change for her and that her and R. Kelly were in a serious relationship that she left her DJing job and everything else. And what bothers me with Kitty is that she's trying to play victim. She's trying to sell this book. She's coming out with the movie. But in that documentary, she admitted to sleeping with underage girls with R. Kelly. At that point, you're no longer a victim, bitch. You're participating in a criminal act. How can you sit there and let a 14-year-old girl eat you out to please R. Kelly? that he was having underage girls performing sex on grown women and these grown women were also allowing it. When I was introduced to one of the girls um, that he told me he trained and since she was 14, those were his words. And then that's when the girl walked in. He had her crawl on the floor towards me and perform oral sex on me. And he said, this is my fucking pet. I'm sorry, but this Kitty Jones lady, she gets no tattoo tears from me, and I think she's just as sick, okay? And I'm tired of her peddling her story, peddling her book, and now she's peddling a movie about the R. Kelly situation. So basically, to me, Kitty Jones comes off as a scorned lover. She's probably in cahoots with R. Kelly to bring young girls to the haram, and because it didn't work out, now she's mad and she's trying to spill all the tea. So to me, she gets the side eye. I'm not feeling anything about her her disposition. I'm still trying to figure out Asante McGee and see you know, what her motives are, but I think a lot of these other women, they're just trying to tell their stories. They don't have book deals. They don't have TV deals. They're not trying to you know, push their movies. They're just being genuine and telling what happened between them and R. Kelly, just like Joycelyn's parents are doing the same thing. But this Kitty Jones lady, I'm so over her. And after she admitted to allowing young girls to eat her out, you know, because she claimed she was brainwashed and trying to, you know, appease R. Kelly, she gets a total side eye from me. So this entire situation is just crazy. Earlier today, video surfaced on TMZ of R. Kelly walking around Macy's or some shopping mall with his little girlfriend. I don't know which one of his girlfriends there is because there's about four or five girls living in that house. But R. Kelly is definitely trying to avoid the camera. Cameras. He knows this whole Me Too movement is after him, especially now that, you know, Ava DuVernay and Oprah and all them are speaking up. So I think R. Kelly definitely has some things to worry about. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this interview that these ladies did with Megyn Kelly on the Today Show. Go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Today says she moved into his Atlantic ho Atlanta home in November 2011 and spent two years there. But Kitty says the relationship became violent within weeks of her arrival. She shared details of her time with R. Kelly in her book, I Was Somebody Before This. Welcome to you both. Thank you. What Thank a title, you. Kitty. What a title. Thank you. So you were in that home for two years. Yes. Um, within three weeks, he became physically abusive? It was actually Atlanta, um, Chicago, not Atlanta. Okay. Um, about two weeks after I had moved in, um, I had confronted him about a videotape that I had saw, and it was a girl that he had introduced me to. And um, that was the first time he became abusive because I noticed that the girl in the tape was someone that he had gone to court for and he had introduced me to her and I didn't know how to handle the information that I had just... Just to be clear, he went to court um, on child pornography charges for a sex tape he was in. The yes. prosecutors alleged he was having sex with a 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. He was acquitted because the jury said, we can't identify that woman, and so we don't know whether she was 14. So they didn't think they could prove it was a child. Right. And right. You, you know this girl, and... He introduced me to her, um, and this is 2011, so years had gone by, and this person's an older woman now, but when I saw the videotape, I realized that that was the same girl he had introduced me to, so. And how old do you believe she was in that sex tape? Um, when I did the math, compared to how old she was when he introduced her to me, she, it landed on 14. So you believe he was guilty of that charge? Yes, and I confronted him about it, and that's when he, the first time he abused me. I know you say he became extremely controlling. Yes. How so? Um, I had to wear sweatpants. I had to stand up when he would walk in a room. Um, I did have to be on his phone plan. I know that the Savages did mention that. He would put a lot of his girlfriends on his phone plan so he can control, like, who you're talking to, 
how often you talk to your family, what you're texting, things like that. Is it true he controlled uh, things as little as you walking out of a room, you going oh, yeah. to use the bathroom, you wanting to eat? Yes. How? What, what would you have to do? Um, you would have to send a text mes message to one of his runners, um, just asking, like, you know, if you can go to the restroom, and then they'll relay the information to him because you weren't, like, free to walk throughout the house. You had to ask permission to go use the bathroom? Yes. Yes. And, and he would use food, you, you claim, as a punishment. Right. Um, when I met him, I was about 130 pounds. Um, when I left two years later, I was 107 pounds. So how does somebody like you, a successful DJ, live in a normal life, who you meet him at this party, how do you get sucked into a situation where you agree to these crazy terms, right? That's a lot of people are gonna be asking. Right, um, I just, it was just a normal, the same way that if you met a guy at a gas station and you thought, okay, this is gonna be, you don't have those expectations where, I mean, you, you just don't think like, when you go into something and you give up things and you compromise, like, okay, I'm gonna move to another city or another state, you know, from our relationship. When you give those things up and for love, you don't expect that that person's gonna turn into something else. You're just in it. So by the time I walked away from those things, I just, which I detail in my book and it'll make more sense. No, but they ran um, you in bit by bit. Yeah, and, and I, mean, I just we, felt like I gave up everything. And then once I was there, I was just in it. And the more I, I started learning about them, I just got, sucked into it and yeah. I didn't, I felt like I didn't have anything else to go back to. Now, Sande, did you have a similar experience with him? I did. Um, when I first met him back in 2013 during the Black Panties tour, um, he was this wonderful guy. He always made you laugh. You never saw anything wrong with him. Um, flying back and forth for two years, going to different shows, hanging out with him. He was just always this funny guy. And it was the summer of 2016, the beginning of the buffet tour. Um, he, asked, he pretty much put me on the bus from city to city back in Dallas, Texas. And I ended up in Oklahoma. And from Oklahoma, I ended up in Atlanta. But did, did, did he control you in the way he controlled Kitty? He controlled me once I moved in. How now, so? Can you okay. give us examples? For example, when I, when I was just flying in back and forth, he would send me texts and, for instance, um, I want to say east of 2015, I went to Chicago and I sat in the hotel for like three days before even having contact with him. And the day when I was about to leave, he just texted me out the blue and said, come to the studio. And I called an Uber to the studio. I arrived there like 10 o'clock in the morning and I told him I'm here. And he, he had his assistant put me in a Sprinter, which is a traveler van, traveling van. I sat there from like 11 o'clock in, in the morning to 8 o'clock that night. But what about, did you have to ask permission to go to the bathroom and get food and leave a room? Yes, when I was on the Sprinter, I had to use the restroom and I text him, Daddy, I need to use the restroom. No Daddy. Response. Yes, we were required to call him Daddy. Required to? Yes, he told us to call him Daddy. You would address him as Daddy. And if you didn't, you were... Yeah, you would get in trouble if you yeah, didn't. or slap. How many women were, you were there most recently, so how many women are in this house? At the time when I was there, it was a total of four of us, and it was two. Did you see, jo did you see Joycelyn? Yes, I did see Joycelyn. My first time seeing Joycelyn was when I was at the house, and at this time, he told me, whenever you enter a room, you have to knock on a door and wait for permission for someone to say, come in. Do you think Joycelyn is there of her own free will? No, I don't. Do you think she's been brainwashed? Definitely, because the things that he say, he, he, turn, he make you turn. He pretty much try to say that your family is jealous that you're with him, your family wants to be with him, and you're happy and this is what you, what you need to do. And if you disobey him, he would like fake cry and make you sympathize. For instance, when we were in Oklahoma. He, let me just stand you by because he, he gave us a, a statement and he's called these accusations unjust and unfair. He says the media has not spoken to enough women who support him. And in a statement to Variety, his management team said, Kelly's music is a part of American and African-American culture that should never and will never be silenced. We will vigorously resist this attempted public lynching of a black man who has made extraordinary contributions to our culture. I have to get you to react to that. Your thoughts that, the, that this is a, a public lynching of a black man. That's bull crap. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. It's, it's bull. Listen, it takes a lot of strength and guts 
to come out and speak publicly about having found yourself in this kind of a situation. I know it's not easy. Thank you for doing so. All right, y'all. So you guys just saw that interview. And in my personal opinion, it looks like R. Kelly may be in a heap of trouble. All these allegations, more and more women are coming out. Like I said, I'm not feeling Kitty Jones, but as far as the other women coming out, the ones in the BuzzFeed article, so many more women are coming out and they're, you know, they're standing their own against R. Kelly. So I think he's really going to have some trouble. I think these charges may end up sticking once everything is sorted through. But I think at this point in time, the best thing for him to do is to let all these women go out of his home and let them go back to their families because this entire situation is just crazy. And it's really sad that R. Kelly has literally been doing this since the 90s and people made excuses for him and they, you know, turned a blind eye. You know, as long as he was making good music, folks didn't care. So it's really, really disturbing to see how now everybody wants to be super concerned about R. Kelly in 2018. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situation. Once again, concerning the pissy pied piper, R. Kelly and all these new allegations coming up against him. So let me know your thoughts. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.